Hi, my name is Maricel Lopez and I am your second grade math virtual content specialist. In the past, we have explored how to draw in Google Slides using the scribble option. We have also learned how to insert shapes and tables in Google Slides. Today, I am going to show you how you, as an educator, can create graphs in different ways on Google Slides. Let's begin. Let's begin by learning how to create a bar graph. Bar graphs are pretty simple. The important thing to keep in mind is the scale of the graph. Usually when I am drawing a graph, I look at the largest number of data and count two numbers higher than that to leave a little wiggle room in my graph. Let's look at the data. The largest number is 27. Therefore, I would ideally want to create a graph with 29 or 30 rows vertically. I can do this by going to the top where it says insert, clicking where it says table. That's going to give you more options and there you can select how many cells your table will have. One thing I noticed when creating these graphs myself is that the maximum number of cells that you can select either vertically or horizontally is 20. It was difficult for me to create anything above 20. One way around this is by changing the scale of your table. Instead of having the numbers in increments of one, you might want to consider increments of two or five. If I create the table in increments of two, then really I only need approximately 15 cells vertically. I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what it looks like when I um, inserted the table with 15 cells going vertically. So now that I have my 15 cells going vertically and my three columns going across, I can start typing in the names of the students at the bottom by clicking inside of the cell. I'm going to type Eli, John, and Amanda. Again, do not worry if it looks tiny here. When you present this to your students in present mode, it will be legible. And I will show you that um, when we are done working on the table. When you hover over the corners, um, this will allow you to resize your graph. You can make it larger or smaller by pinching the corners in or pulling them out. Now it is time to include the scale for the graph. So we mentioned I am going to be counting by two. The way that I am going to do that is by going to the top where it's insert text box. I'm going to draw a text box right next to the bar graph. And then I can start typing in the numbers so that they appear vertically. I can start counting backwards from the number 30 down. All right, I fast forwarded a bit, but um, I'm going to show you the last few numbers. So the next one would be six and four. I'm making sure to line up my numbers with each of the cells in the bar graph. And I have two. Then, of course, at the bottom is zero. Let me just shrink this a bit so that it lines up perfectly. All right, looking good so far. We have our categories, we have our scale. Now we're going to start displaying the data, um, creating the bars on the bar graph. The preferred way to do this is to use um, insert shape and then go to the square option. And for example, Eli his number is an odd number, it's five. So we wanna make sure that we draw his bar uh, halfway into the cell to represent five, right? Because he doesn't have six books that he read so far. Okay, and then we always want to leave space between the bars. So I'm just making sure that my square or my rectangle, should I say, um, is kind of in the middle of this column here. And then you can use the paint can tool to fill the bar whatever color of your liking. 
So I am going to select yellow. The next child, John, read a total of 18 books. That is an even number. So we don't have uh, an issue with that. John's bar, I've just copied and pasted it from Eli so that they're the same width. And I'm going to make sure that his bar goes all the way up to the number 18. And last but not least, we have Amanda, 27 is another, another odd number. I'm going to edit, copy, Eli's bar once again, edit, paste. I'm going to place that over Amanda's name and just make sure that I stretch it all the way between 26 and 28 and leaving space between the bars on the bar graph. All right, awesome. Our bar graph is looking great. Uh, two final things that you should never forget is the title for the bar graph. And unfortunately, we do not have space to put it over the top. So I'm going to write it on the side. Number of books read, that's the title just grabbed it from the table on the side. Then I'm going to make that bold so it stands out. And then the scale, we also want to label that. I'm going to insert another text box by clicking on this T with the squares around it. And that one will also be titled number of books. But we are going to make sure this font is very small. And I'm also going to turn the text box vertically. Because this text box is going to live like this on the side. And then we need another label for the box are the names of the students. So again, up to the letter T with the square around it. I'm going to draw my text box here. I'm going to try to squeeze it in there. And um, I usually select do not auto fit just so that I can customize the size of this text box. And then I'm writing in here the word students, which is also going to be very small. Awesome. Now, as promised, I am going to enter present mode so that you can see what it looks like on your students end. Um, all of this will be legible to them. All right, now it's larger. You can see the numbers clearer, the labels, the names of the students. Looks good. If you are set on having a scale of one and not by twos, there is another way to do it, and I'm going to show you how. Um, so you can go to insert image and I'm going to search the web in the search box. I'm going to type grid paper. And then you can select the grid paper of your choice. I am going to select this one and click insert. And then that's going to give me an actual sheet of grid paper that I can work with. Um, remember for the other bar graph, I counted 15 cells. If I'm going to be using this one as a scale of one, then I need to count 30 cells vertically. So I'm going to do that now. One, two, three, four, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So my um, bar graph will be about this tall. So now I'm going to go to the top and select this crosshairs symbol. You're going to see these black lines pop up around. That's going to allow us to crop the image. And then I only want four columns going across horizontally. So I'm going to cut it that way as well. And I'm going to count one more time just to double check. All right, I double checked and I do have 30 cells going vertically and four columns going across. So now once again, um, my um, image is selected. It has the blue squares around so I can resize it, make it wider if I need to. 
make it shorter. I'm going to make it a little wider. So I actually am uh, thinking about shrinking it here because I need room at the bottom for the student names. I'm going to write the student names. Uh, this time I'm going to write them vertically. And the way to do that is by selecting, by inserting a text box. Um, it's always going to type horizontally when you first insert it, but you can use this blue dot at the top to help you turn the text box vertically. And then I'm going to place the name right underneath the column where I want it to go. Then I'm going to select it, edit, copy, edit, paste so that I can have the other, kind of the same format for the other student's name. Click on that, delete that, type over it John's name, and then again, edit, paste, and I'm going to type in Amanda's name. Okay, now that we have our student names um, at the bottom of the graph, we need to work on including the scale. So this one is actually going to go by ones and it's similar to the way that I did it on the other um, graph. I'm going to insert a text box and count down backwards, typing vertically. Okay, now I have included the text box with the numbers going down from 30 to zero vertically. This is my scale. Actually, I'm going to move that over a bit because I don't really need that extra column. Now it's time to build the bars for the bar graph. Uh, once again, I'm going to be using the same strategy from earlier. Insert shape, go to shapes, insert shape, shape, square, and Eli has five. This time we're not gonna have an issue because we have this graph that's a scale of one. So I'm going to line that up perfectly with the five. Again, we are leaving space between the columns. And there you have it. I filled in the other two bars on the bar graph. Now we're going to put our title, labels, and same thing as before, we have no space on the top, so I'm going to put the title on the left-hand side, label the scale, and label the students at the bottom by using text boxes. And there you have it, folks. This is our completed bar graph using the grid paper option. I label the students at the bottom, number of books, the scale along the edge. Um, it's legible in present mode. Looks great. Creating a picture graph is the final graph that you're going to learn in this video. Um, it involves similar steps to creating a bar graph, but not that many. First, we're going to start at the top by clicking on insert, then table. This time, you only need three columns to show the categories, which in this instance are the student names. And then we are going to select two rows of three. Okay, the table is a little big. So again, while it's still selected, we are going to format it, stretch it, shrink it, however you'd like. So we have David, James, and Sarah. Now this space is the space that I am going to use to insert the images for the picture graph. Okay, I am going to select again by going to insert image. I can search for whatever image I'd like. So personal preference. I'm going to use smiley faces um, for the icons in this picture graph. All right. Now, depending on the number of smiley faces that you need, you might decide that each smiley face is equal to one, or you may decide that each smiley face is equal to two. For today's example, I am going to decide that um, each smiley face equals two stickers. 
but I need to remember to include that in the key. So David read six books. Um, I'm going to give him three smiley faces. Make sure the smiley face is selected. Go to edit, copy, and then edit, paste. All right, now David has three smiley faces, which we already know is really six stickers. So I'm just gonna make sure to write that in here. We're going to call this the key. Helpful for your students to know. Now, all right, I fast forwarded a bit. So James has 12 stickers according to the data. I gave him six smiley faces because again, each one is equal to two. And then finally, let's complete um, the data for Sarah in the picture graph. All right, I completed the data for Sarah. She has 12 smiley faces for the 24 stickers that she collected. And then I also took the liberty of including the title at the top, number of stickers collected. I hope this video has helped you learn different ways of creating graphs for your students using Google Slides. The more you practice, the better you will get. Until next time, bye-bye.